Now let us look at the next mechanism which is the mechanism using the mechanism using test and set log instruction or you can say TSL instruction. To study the TSL instruction first of all you need to understand why did the previous mechanism actually failed because uh, we thought that the previous mechanism was so good this mechanism was so good it is doing so nice work it will execute everything but this mechanism actually failed we need to understand the reason why this mechanism actually failed and to remove that reason we introduce the new mechanism which is the test and set lock instruction so if you execute this program this ex program will, will eventually con convert it to the assembly language code the same program can be written in assembly language like this we will be having load some load instruction load lock what is R not comma lock load R not or you can say ri comma m of lock then we'll be having compare the value of the register ri with zero with zero now jump if not zero to step one this is these are the steps this is step one step two step three and then in the fourth case we are going to do store store m comma lock comma hash one and then we'll enter into the critical section and then we'll do store m comma lock comma hash zero comma hash zero so if you convert this program to the assembly language code then it will be converted like this now this assembly language code is saying that take the value of lock and load the value of lock to the register r not take the value of lock and load that value of lock to the register r not right so r not will be storing the value of lock whatever the value is there if this is a lock variable if it is storing zero so there will be a register r not or ri which will be storing zero now it is going to compare the value of ri with zero it will say if the comparison is going to result that it is a not zero value or it is a non zero value then again go to the step one otherwise this condition will be false and we'll come to this statement and we will store one into this lock here it is saying store one inside the lock and then and execute in the critical section right now why this mechanism is actually failing why the previous mechanism which we studied is actually failing because because of between these instructions between all these instructions which we are having we can have a preemption we can have a preemption at so many different locations let me uh, do one thing let me show it to you mm, okay I'm just trying out the software okay fine so we can have preemption at all these different locations we can have, we can have a preemption here we can have a preemption here right we can have a preemption here we can have a preemption here we can have a preemption here and so on because uh, because of the algorithm sort uh, the scheduling algorithm which we are using we can have a preemption anywhere we can have a preemption here 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 or here at any location now what if we have a preemption here now what if we have a preemption here if we have a preemption here still uh, if a, for example a process p1 came process p1 executes the line number one if there's a preemption here and the process p2 came process p2 also execute the line number one and then before it executing the line number two there's a preemption here p3 also executed the line number three one and now if p1 is executing the line number two p1 will already know p1 already know that the value of lock is zero p2 already know the value of lock is zero p3 already know the value of zero so if if, if we have a preemption here still there's a problem still there's a problem right uh, if you have a preemption here still there will be a problem if you have a preemption here still there will be a problem why there will be a problem because till this point of time unless we execute these three statements we are not going to store one inside the lock so before storing one inside the lock if we get a preemption at any location in these statements in these three statement if we get a preemption at any location we are going to face a problem of preemption we are going to face a problem here and the our mechanism will fail 
So this is the reason why the previous solution actually failed. That is the solution to log variable. Now we want to write a mechanism which should pass that problem and which should not fail here at all at any problem at, at any case. Okay. For that purposes, we introduced a new mechanism which is called as test and set lock instruction. And this test and set lock instruction is actually going to you know combine all these three instructions at the same time or you can say simultaneously all these three instructions simultaneously now let us do let us let us let us can we can we do some experiments here let us think think about it can we do some kind of experiments here let us uh, see sir what are you saying sir why how can you do experiments let us do one thing let us do one thing instead of you know uh, writing this e equations like this what if what if we change these statements and we try to move some statement upwards and we try to move some statements downwards okay again i'm saying if we try to move some statements upward and try to move some statement downwards why we are trying to do it is because we are not executing this statement here and we can have a preemption in any of these line that is why if there's a problem what if what if we transfer the statement here the first location where there's a preemption can we solve the problem can we solve the problem let us see if we transfer this statement here so the this complete program will look something like this in the line number one will be having load ri comma m lock in line number two will be having store m of lock comma hash one in line number three will be having compare the value of ri comma hash zero in line number four will be having jump if non zero to step one and then enter into the critical section enter into the critical section and then execute the line number five or you can line number six that is store m of log comma hash zero now if I make the statements in such a way, if I make these statements like this, can we now solve the problem? Is it actually solving the problem? Do you think is this solving the problem? Think about it. Pause the video, think about it. Is it actually solving the problem? Let us see. Let us see. If there is a process P1, P1 and P2, these two processes are trying to enter into the critical section. Now assuming that P1 came to the line number 1, P1 stole, uh, got the variable value of the log. And here, at this location, at least this location, there's a preemption. There's a preemption. So P2 also came. P2 executed the line number one. It got the value of log, and there's a preemption. After that, P1 came, and P1 executed the line number two. So P1 stored one inside the log, and there's a preemption here. Again, P2 came. P2 executed the line number two, and it also stored the value of one in inside the log. Again, there's a preemption here. So, so again P1 came, P1 checked the compared the value of lock which it got. P1 got that the value of lock is 0, initial value of lock was 0 before it changed. So this condition is true, so P1 will answer entire the critical section. Right, so it will say that this condition is false, this condition is false and it will answer entire the critical section. P2 also executed this statement, for P2 also this condition is false, so it will answer entire the critical section. So even if we change the lines, even if we change the lines, still P1 and P2, the, both of these processes can have preemption and because they can have preemption, still both of these processes can enter into the critical section simultaneously at the same time. Okay, so still this mechanism is also going to fail. This is also going to fail. Sir, what happened? This is going to fail. This is failed. This is failed. Okay, now what can you do? How can you solve the problem? How can you solve the problem? The problem is now solved by the new mechanism which is the TSL instruction. The problem is that we are taking the value of the variable and we are changing the variable of the value of the variable in the some other line or you can say some second line. Now what we'll try to do is we'll try to change the value of this variable exactly in the same line so that there will not be any problem. That's right? So we are going to change this instruction this way. We are going to do TSL lock R0. Then we'll do compare the value of R0 comma hash zero. And then we'll do jump if non-zero to step one. J 
jump if non zero to step one this is line number one line number two and line number three so what we done did is we checked these two conditions and we combined them into one single line so that so that will not be having any preemption before i we change the value of this variable and because we combined this variable so here this solution is going to pass this going solution is going to follow the condition of mutual exclusion because no two process can enter inside the critical section but the second condition is progress it is also going to follow progress the third condition is uh, uh, bounded weighting it is also going to follow bounded weighting but it is not following the condition which is architecture neutrality which is architecture neutrality now this uh, kind of solution which is a test and set lock solution is going to require special support from the operating system so special support from the computer hardware so that computer hardware should be able to provide the test and so lock lock in instruction to this right secondly there's a problem which is associated with the test and set lock instruction that that problem is called as the problem of priority inversion the problem of priority inversion what is the priority inversion problem let us look at that so see assuming this is the critical section this is the entry section and this is the exit section now now if a process p1 came process p1 entered inside the critical section and now a process p2 came which is having higher priority as compared to the process p1 p1 want to enter into the critical section and what will happen because it is having the higher priority sorry p2 want to enter into, into the critical section now because p2 is having the higher priority because p2 is having the higher priority so again and again will give cpu to p2 but p2 will be here and p2 will be waiting it will be busy in waiting and will not be able to give cpu to the process p1 so because of that process p2 will never be able to enter inside the critical section okay so that is the problem and this problem is called as priority inversion priority inversion problem okay so this this is for now and this this problem this uh, this priority inversion problem is also called as spin lock it is also called as spin lock or priority inversion problem priority inversion problem priority inversion problem write it down in your notebook that it is saying the priority inversion problem okay so let me repeat it again step by step pause the videos and write it with me okay assuming p1 is in the critical section now there's a new process p2 which is having higher priority it want to enter into the critical section therefore p1 gets preempted and the scheduler tries to run the p2 process but synchronization mechanism is stopping p2 but p1 won't let p2 get inside the critical section until if it leaves the critical section and p1 wants cpu to finish it or to come out from the cpu okay from the critical section sorry but p2 don't leave the cpu until it gets into the critical section now p1 and p2 are in a kind of uh, lock uh, in a lock and it is a kind of a deadlock which is also called a spin lock that is the problem with the lock variable solution if the operating system provide test and set lock mechanism then you can use the lock variable otherwise don't use okay so with priority uh, you can see with priority algorithm it creates a priority inversion problem which is which will lead to a spin lock which will lead to a problem of spin lock okay now this one more solution which is hardware based solution and that hardware based solution is actually disabling the interrupts which i told you when i'm saying disabling the interrupts it means disable the interrupts which can cause preemption so if you disable the conditions of preemption uh, then there will not be any problem of synchronization right so what will happen if we so if we say the hardware solution it is called as disabling interrupts it is called as disabling interrupts so what will happen the disabling interrupts is there will be an entry section there will be a critical section there will be an exit section in the exit entry section we are going to disable all interrupts we are going to disable all the interrupts and in the exit section we are going to enable all the interrupts and because we are going to disable all the interrupts so it is going to disable the condition which is which leads to preemption and because will not be having any preemption will not be having any pro problem related to any problem related to synchronization
right but still preemption is important for us because a preemption we can run multiple processes simultaneously it provides us so many very good uh, scheduling algorithms like we have round robin scheduling al al algorithm and so on we have so many algorithms preemption is important we want preemption right and disabling interrupts it is disabling that preemption okay now let us look at some more solutions which can which we may maybe may which may be able to solve the problem of synchronization let us look at them okay